It's been a minute. It's a, it's been a minute. How was well? How was Ireland? Ah, fucking amazing. First of all, what a country! What a country! Just just the people are the greatest people. Yep. The landscape is just stunning. Um, I am awesome at driving on the left hand side of the road. Really? <laughs> yeah. Better than on the right side? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm better okay. than the right. But uh, that tracks. Does it? Well, you're always talking about how your brain is like opposite. Oh, yeah. You think about things differently. And mm-hmm. I, I agree. Well, yeah. First of all, I like the puttering engine of a diesel engine. I was like, this is cool. Uh, this this car doesn't, uh, well, just, it's not a golf cart, like a, not like a $100,000 golf cart like we drive, but, um, which is a superior machine. I will, I will admit, once I got back in, I was like, mm, this is a better car. <laughs> but I was having fun kind of puttering around like in a diesel, you know, half electric, half diesel, I think it was. Went forever before the gas went down. Everywhere I went, people fucking love Sunny. Yeah. It was so heartwarming and refreshing. And people were genuinely excited. You know, we did, at one point, we drove around the Ring of Barra, which is in the southwest corner of the island. Uh, so it's like down in western Cork. And what a drive. Just, just stunning view. And we stopped at this place called Helen's Bar, which was really not nothing was near it. And they were like, "How the fuck did you find this place? What are you doing here?" And and, but it was also like, I guess everyone has television, but but it seemed like a place that wouldn't have television. You know, one of those towns that had like five people in it. Uh huh. But they all watched. It's strange. As Glenn and I were just, we saw each other in the parking lot there, and as we were walking up, I, for some reason, I don't know why, I mentioned to him that I had finally seen. The Banshees of Inishirin, oh, which yeah. I have not seen yet. Mm-hmm. And it's, great. it's kind of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Where there was just this island, and it was in, what, 1923 in the movie, and there's really nothing to do except a little bit of work here or there, and mm-hmm. then you just go to the pub every day at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and just get hammered. What are you talking about? I was in Ireland for 10 days. Everyone there is so wonderful about the show and mm-hmm. loves the show. And... uh I, was, I just loved driving on the opposite side of the road. It was just like such a fun challenge. I feel like my brain like clicked into it. I did not like it at first. The first oh, drive brain? out there was hairy, but by the tenth day, I was like, "Get me in the left side of this car." My like, first three days, I kept walking to the wrong, like the passenger side to get in yeah, the car. Yeah, I was like, oh course. shit, I gotta go around. Yeah. But then by the end, I was zipping around in that thing, loving every second of it. I don't think I've ever. I drove on the left side of the highway up here today. <laughs> just because I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> less fun. <laughs> yeah, just dodging less cars. Fun. Less, fun. less fun. Less no, fun. No, that was hairy. people were pissed. Yeah. Megan. Guys. Megan Gans. Is Megan back. Gans Welcome is back. back. Oh, Welcome back. I missed you guys. Back. Great to see you. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, here I am. It seems like it's been weeks and weeks and weeks. Really, you guys recorded things in like the one week I was out of town. Mm. So it sweet. Yeah, <laughs> that's 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 that is the uh Are we telling people that? Yeah. I think it's fine for people to know that. Sometimes yeah. we do these things weeks apart, and sometimes we do like three days in a row. Yeah. Because we uh, we have to. I think it's important for people to know that actually, in case we bring something back up. In case, you know, something from an episode that we talked about comes back, or something, I mean, an episode of the podcast comes back up, and we're like, oh, yeah, last week, blah, 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 and it's something that, right. you know, we posted four uh-huh. weeks ago or something. Mm-hmm. In fact, the one that's going to air on Monday, or they probably will listen, they will have already seen this one, but the Dennis System one, we oh, yeah. actually recorded before I the left, last yeah. two that aired, just because we had to, just schedule, that's schedule this, wise. This schedule so we all got lives here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was fun. I did a little road trip, went out to Denver and back, mm-hmm. uh, and it was really fun. Just me and the dog, just hitting the wide open road. Didn't yeah. get murdered. Yeah, just let driving me, around with a dog. Let yeah. me tell just you something that Ireland has gotten right that that our country has gotten wrong. Every time you stop in a little town, you're not like, and there's the McDonald's, and there's the Walmart, and yeah. there's Unique. the Starbucks, like. Yeah. It, we've destroyed our our yeah. small towns and our small businesses mm-hmm. and our beautiful landscape with the mollification of America. I'm running for <laughs> president <laughs> in 2024. I'm announcing it right here. Uh, oh my god, I would hate to be president. That would be, <laughs> that would be awful. Guys, wouldn't that suck? How's your morning been? <laughs> 
He's on fire. This Charlie's morning, on Charlie. fire. Yeah, what's going what's on, man? Like, yeah. I missed you guys. I'm happy to. Uh, I'm happy to be here and chat. I'm excited <laughs> to, to hang out. That's very sweet. I'm excited as well. Now, how many cups of coffee have you had? Oh. You seem pretty coffeeed up. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, always, but no more than usual by this point. Hmm. Just in a good mood. I'm just in a great mood. That's just great. in a good mood. Yeah, that's weird because I was driving here thinking like, not that I'm in a bad mood. I'm actually not. I'm in a good mood. I just was like, usually I'm driving over and I'm thinking like, oh, you know what? I want to talk about this. Like, I bet, you know, I have got something on my mind, mm. something that, you know, irritated me or something. <laughs> yeah, it's usually it's good when you got an irritation. Yeah, yeah it's usually an irritation. Or, and about often, sometimes it's a, you know, something that was awesome. And I was just driving over and I was like, I, got, I, I, I don't know, man. You that's know, okay life's too. Good. Yeah, that's okay life's too. Good. But yeah, I guess that's the a good weather's thing. good. You know, it's not I mean? good for the podcast, but no, it's good well, for the life. Well, no, I, I agree. It's not good for the podcast. It's, you know, I think Rob's right. It's better when we got something to argue about. <laughs> some, some, some kind of yeah. fighting. Yeah, some, some bitch kind of fighting. Did that all stay in? Yeah. Oh, you, good. You don't watch yeah. the podcast then, is what I'm learning. No. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> how much of a narcissist? I mean, I'm just going to sit back and watch the podcast. Quality control. Quality control. QC. I trust Megan. And Mara and our entire team, really. I mean, mm -hmm. um, well, that's foolish because you know because <laughs> you're coming off terrible. You're coming off real bad. <laughs> yeah, real, real coming bad. off like a real douche. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that no, I sometimes me. I do. Maybe that's sometimes why I don't, I don't. Like to listen to it. I, I some, I sometimes enjoy. You know, I'll give like a note or two, but hardly any. You do do a very good job every time. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. Yeah, um, I don't yeah. often get a chance to watch them before we we post them. Uh, so yeah. I try to, but I don't. Running a little behind sometimes, but I watch all of them. I watch all the ones when when you when I wasn't here, and I appreciated. Like, <clears throat> I mean, I definitely did leave in all the conversations about. Uh, Bands and your diets and yeah, all the fights, amino acids <laughs> and all that. Me gaslighting, Glenn. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the gaslighting. <laughs> a lot of um, no, I, I left all those uh, mostly because I wanted people to miss me getting you guys mm, back on mm -hmm. track. So it was a strategy on my yeah. part. But, well, we um, noticed that there was an episode where you weren't there, and then all of a sudden, Mara was there, and we yeah. weren't sure exactly why. And we we did ask that. <laughs> we're was really this, certain we mm -hmm. that it was yeah, yeah a you wrangling the teacher. Situation. It was a wrangling <laughs> situation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, the kids yeah, are losing the class. Great, other mom. It's like having a like having a substitute teacher who didn't. <laughs> yeah, you know, somebody actually like, commented. It was like a substitute teacher who wasn't told that she had the worst oh, really? class in school. <laughs> 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 who wasn't told she had the worst uh, class in school. <laughs> oh my god, weren't you? Was it? I remember just being brutal, yes. brutal yeah. to substitute teachers. I feel teachers. bad, actually. Oh, I think of course it back you on, feel bad. Uh, I mean, because that person looked like they were 45 years old, and most likely they were— 32? Way younger. Yeah. 21. Yeah, like right out of school, 22. Making $10 an hour. Yeah, yeah just making nothing. <laughs> making nothing. And just getting abused yeah. by also, but high school there, kids. There, there does seem like—I get it from the kid's perspective, right? Which is like, hang on a second. You know— the deal is, I gotta come in the class. I got. I can't be home with my Nintendo. I gotta come in. I gotta. I gotta <laughs> sit and I gotta listen to this teacher. I gotta learn shit. Now, if that teacher bails on the deal, don't slap in a new person. Okay, I am committed to this one, <laughs> this eighth grade teacher all year long. You're gonna stick a someone else in? Uh uh. No. And so you know you gotta you gotta rib them a little do you bit. Think, I get it. Do you think that the kids are mean to the substitute out of loyalty to the original teacher? <laughs> no, 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 definitely no. not. Just, just out of just out of like, well, this is a raw deal, right? It should yeah, be like if the teacher's sick, if I gotta be, school's here. out. You know, it's like a snow day. It's like yeah. you know. You're always looking for your boundaries as a, as a kid, and you're looking to see if you can. Where's the moment? Where's the point of weakness? And like with Mara, it, it was clear that there was no point of weakness. We tried. We came at her, but she kept put. She kept shutting it down. She was like the. She was no like that one her. substitute you would get, and everybody would try to fuck with her, and she'd be like, Shh, "Sit down, Mr. <laughs> McElhenney, or you were." Out, you are going, and you're like, oh, I uh, can't it. fuck with her. Yeah. There was a real moment, though, when she said she was going to try to wrangle you guys where I saw all of the hairs <laughs> on your neck stand yeah, up. Yeah, What's yeah, triggering? Just the, at the idea of mm. being wrangled. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's triggering. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I do wrangle you guys, though. No. I, I, it's not, I want to talk us. about the episodes. I, I you nudge. nudge us. Well, that's just because I, I like talking about the episodes. It's not because I think the podcast is better when we do. It's just this is my opportunity to grill you guys, so I'm not personally going to pass that up. I but. think it's good to have the questions, too, because sometimes I'll watch an episode and be like, I don't know exactly what to talk about. Like, mm. I kind of want somebody to ask me questions as opposed mm -hmm. to just bringing stuff up randomly. Well, good news. 
I have some today. Well, well let's do it. Should do, we talk about do the you want to talk about that? Or I do. Just, I, or, I, or, I found it very funny. Or is anyone coming in hot? Do we have any, any? I'm not coming in cold. Coming in cold, happy, but cold. Have you eaten enough today? Are you cold? Are you physically cold? No, I'm physically or? cold. No, okay. no, no. no. <laughs> right. no. I'm coming in. I'm coming in in a good mood. I got up very early. I did a, a radio show in Philadelphia, the Preston and Steve show. We're all aware of Preston and Steve. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the show support of the podcast, the live Sunny Podcast Tour. Dude, I'm that we're going to be doing. I'm very excited about that. It's so, we're, we had we're so much Philly. fun. But they're past. playing Radio City Music Hall in New York City. Yeah. I mean, that is And the venue dope. in Philly is huge, right? Oh, like I'm going to tell big... you that the, 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 the venue we're playing in Philadelphia means way more to me personally well, than I'm Radio sure. City Music Hall. Okay. I have never, I would say that I have been to the Man Music Center, which is where we're playing, mm-hmm. um, no less than, and I'm not exaggerating, 25 times. Okay. I have never been inside the Man Music Center. Oh, it you was just one of those out places in the parking lot where, to hang and score a bag of mushrooms? Yes, yes. It was one <laughs> no of those way. places in high school uh, where uh, the the Allman Brothers would be playing or mm-hmm. um, the— uh, Heart, maybe? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fucking A with the heart. No, no, no. I had to- <laughs> um, no, Steve— uh, Wait, what's the—, uh, the Who Sings the Joker— Oh, oh, Steve, Steve Miller, Miller, Steve Miller, Steve, Steve Miller, Miller man. man. You know, yeah. like that period yeah, of time yeah, where yeah, yeah. it was classic rock, and they were it was yacht rock, and they were kind of coming. But you wouldn't go to the concert; you would just go to to the parking lot, and it would be where high school kids could find kegs of beer. Oh. It was also a place where you could find whippets. Oh, sure. God. And apparently, according to <sighs> President Jeez. Steve this morning, the whippet market is booming. Is it? People are still. Doing whippets. Whip it real good. <laughs> <laughs> whip it real bad. <laughs> whip it real bad for the brain. Yeah. Brain yeah. 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 Whip it real bad. Whipping it real bad. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm hoping there won't be any whippets in the parking lot of the Always Sunny podcast. I guarantee there will be. Yeah. Somebody somewhere has got a whip it. Um, speaking of Philly, though, the I 95 collapse. Mm. Did you have a lot of your friends? Texting about that, your like group. I sure did. A road collapse. A, ro- a, a whole highway. A whole highway collapse. <laughs> yeah, crazy. What? Because yeah. the tanker like ignited below it, Ooh. and the fire collapsed the highway Holy above shit. it. The whole I ninety five, and there was a great video which I'll probably put in the podcast Ooh. of uh, local news of a guy talking about <laughs> having it's heard the I ninety five collapsing, and he's got that accent. And it is it's oh, worth, it's, yes, it's worth us yeah, just watching that. it now because we could we could talk about it. <laughs> we could talk about it. I'll see. Rob Rosell sent it to us. Uh, I, I was sent that exact clip by no less than twelve <laughs> people. <laughs> Dude, so I was passed out, and I woke up to nothing but text messages, phone calls. I had no idea what was going on. And I got dressed, I came out, I looked down, and I smell like a smoky smell. And I'm like, damn, dude, so it's crazy. When you like, came out and saw it, did yeah. you know what was happening yet, or did it just look like a fire? Well, no, nah, so I got all those text messages, screenshots, and I'm like, everybody's like, yo, where's this at? Like, nobody had like a direct like location. So I was like, look out my window, I see a bunch of cops. I'm like, bro, that's right by my apartment, so. so when did you figure out and realize that the freeway collapsed, the northbound side? Oh, dude, I was passed out when that happened. Passed out. Passed out. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> dude, I was passed. Why would you dude, Why would you lead with out. that? You're talking to the news. You're talking oh, to the dude, news. And you know your, your mom's going to see this. Your friends are all going to see it, which is maybe why you say it. But you lead with, I was passed out. Passed out. He's just facts. He's just stating facts. You know, there's no filter to it. Also swearing yeah. on the news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I love this guy. You can really hear the accent on saw because they put like an L at the end of it. Saw. Saul. Saul. It's like. Uh, yeah. Something about that Philly accent really tickles the imagination. It's confounding. It is it is the strangest. It really is to, yeah. to this day one of the strangest accents it's I've like ever heard. It's like a Boston accent slammed with the Deep South mixed with England. You're Australia. Like, and Australia. There's some Australia. Australia and just like a weird Bond villain. Yeah, it sounds it sounds fake. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like if you'd never heard that accent before and didn't know what it was and somebody was doing it, you'd be like, ooh, somebody's doing like a really bad New York accent or. Well, you remember like when we first started the show and we were debating like 
Do we do we do we do the accents or not? And we're like, oh, people right. won't know. We'll people won't that. know what yeah. the fuck we're doing. They're gonna be right. like, what so is we this? Just, we we chose specific words, and we'll just do it for those words. <laughs> yeah, you know, Danny pe- pe- goes pe- in and out. Danny of it. goes in and out of it. Yeah, yeah. He was he was messing around with a lot in, when he first came in in the second season. He ramped it up this year a little bit. I noticed. Did, a oh, did he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So suddenly decided his character has a Philly accent. I do really want to talk about this episode. So shall we just <sighs> shall we jump in? Mac it? and Charlie write a movie. Ma- yeah, dude. First of all, Danny is doing the accent a little bit in, in this episode, but like the thing that jumped out at me most was him. Why are you rubbing on that phone? <laughs> why are you rubbing on it? Let me rub on Let it. Let me rub on it. Why are you rubbing on the phone? Let me rub on it. What are you doing? Wait, no, 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 no. Hey, 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 Frank. Get your greasy, fat sausage fingers off my touchscreen phone. This thing's new. My fingers are not greasy. Uh, you have four sausage links in your pocket right now. Yeah, but I don't touch the sausage links. Why should I do that when I can let my shirt do the work? Watch. No, no oh, touching. God, you're an long. animal. That was a Roselle joke. Yeah, totally. Like, I, I remember, remember that was a Ro- I remember Same. that was a Roselle line. But also, just the, the context that it was an absurd thing that Dennis was looking at his phone that much. And how yeah. sad it is that we now live in a culture where we're all guilty of sort of acting like you're acting in that episode. But in that episode, it's a joke that you're this disengaged yes. and now with it's the totally world. Normal. Mm-hmm. And now we are all so engaged with that device that I would also like to point it's out. Horrible. That's horrible. That's a horrible thing. thing. It's sad. So that phone, and I remember this. Uh, this was like a year after a year or and change after. No, actually, I think it was like almost two years after the iPhone had first come out on the market. And BlackBerry, <laughs> All right. available for rent, rental now, uh, had, uh, had just come out with the BlackBerry Storm, which was the phone that that really destroyed it. They thought it was going to take the world by storm. Thank yeah, you. and boy, it, it just sure did, did not. not. They rushed it to market, and uh, and I remember actually, I was like, I, I was wondering, I was like, why didn't we? I, I think I can't remember why we had a BlackBerry Storm instead of an iPhone. I think. Oh, I, I think I can guess. Uh, yeah, it can <laughs> I, Apple was like, what? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, thank you. No, and BlackBerry, BlackBerry, BlackBerry was, was like, like well, yeah, yes, please, well, yes, please, <laughs> yes, please. No, you'll, you'll exactly talk about what the, I was going to say. The, you'll, yeah. you'll hold it in every scene, yes. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you hold I, it in every scene, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and I do remember, I do remember messing around with the phone because I was curious about it. And I was so, I was like, this is so weird. Like the whole screen clicked, you know, oh, because the yeah. whole concept behind yeah. that phone was it's not going to be an iPhone because it'll be a touch screen, but it'll still have that BlackBerry click. So mm-hmm. when you press the screen, one of those. the whole screen would click. And it was a piece of shit. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah, it was yeah. really glitchy. It was really slow. It was very laggy. And not anything like the movie by the same name, which moves very quickly. <laughs> yes, the movie it's itself is not very laggy well. at all. Yes. And, and uh, yeah, uh, but but yeah, I remember that it was a it was a BlackBerry Storm, and I remember thinking like this is not a not not a great not a great phone. Um, but yeah, but it was after t- I mean touchscreen phones had just come out, so it was just becoming a thing to be able to like you know be on your phone at but, all times and not be a businessman just Do you guys a- remember this cuz I don't remember <laughs> this like why why did we go with that storyline for your character right the disengaged that is very funny you know that we're pitching in a movie and you're half engaged and then you do finally get engaged to talk about the penetration which I thought was hilarious <laughs> but like but but do you like do you remember <laughs> like why like why we when would that sort was of Was it attitude? that you needed the twist at the end that he had been typing up? Yeah, my, my, I mean, I think I think we been. were probably just talking about in the room the fact that like now with because the, the iPhone again had been out for about a year and a half or something like that, and I think it was becoming very clear that people were just like, you know, even more glued to their phones than they ever had been. Mm, and that was yeah. a, a funny concept, it's like a new kind of funny thing to mm. bring up. But also, you you know, when we're in the right in the writers' room and we're like, okay, well, it'd be funny if these characters write a movie. Okay, who are the the dumbest people to write the movie. Okay, probably it's Mac and Charlie. We know D would want to be in the movie. We could see Frank wanting to be an agent. And we're like, okay, Dennis, Dennis. Like, we, we, what? You know, we yeah, do that well, with all yeah, of our characters. Like, like, okay, we figure do? out these two, this pairing, this pairing. Now, what are we going to do with Mac? Okay, what's Mac going to do? Mm. Um, and it might have been, there's just that picture. Could have been, yeah. This one had the, uh, what, you know, for whatever reason, I, I can't remember why, but like, or I don't know why, but very oftentimes we don't send you two off. To 
to do on draft, just the two of you. Yeah, and this was a, and uh-huh. I remember this, this was, was one a, that you a guys Michael did. Michael Henny Howerton joint. This yeah, one. I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember. I remember us writing this together actually. Um, and I remember it it being fun and yeah. Yeah, I don't know why we don't do it more often. But I remember. I usually. Do, I have a memory of you guys coming back with a draft and being like, "Oh, this is a lot of fun." Like yeah. all the conversations about what the movie's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, it was fun. And I, I, I remember thinking the concept of like, I think when we hit on that Dennis, the fact that he's disengaged is what makes him um, appealing. As, as an actor mm-hmm. was funny to uh, us as uh-huh. kind of an inside joke is like that kind of thing of like, you have to show this, there's this weird thing when you go into auditions as an actor, like if they get the sense that you really want the part, there's something that kind of turns people off about that, even mm-hmm. though you should want the actor who worked the yeah. hardest, who wants the part the most. Ba- Bateman really, has a phrase for that. Yeah, what Jason is that? Bateman, sexy indifference. Sexy indifference. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's yeah, true. Yeah. It's true. Like if it works somehow ev- in every capacity. It works in every. Yeah. It works in every interpersonal relationship that you have. And you know, I think I think that's why I, I've I've always that that's part of the reason why I think Australians do so well in auditions because I think they have that kind of sexy indifference. They're just like. It, it, it doesn't feel like there are that many. It, it feels like a lot of them are just like they're just rough, wild, crazy people who come into, who, who are just like acting because it's like, yeah, I thought it'd be fun, you know? <laughs> just kind of guy for it and just see what happens. Yeah, you know, I can't do that. That's um, pretty yeah, good. Really good. Yeah, yeah, um, good at <laughs> you know, but it's, it's almost like they, they don't really give a shit about the, it's just kind of like something that they're doing that day we'll is do like again. doing the audition. Generalize the whole continent. Come on. <laughs> no, but. Let's get a lot of the stereotypes <laughs> funny. <laughs> you think it's too much to give them a whole continent? <laughs> you know, I, you know I okay, so I just got into this. Bit, this you know? I think we were trying to. We talking about continents? It's no longer a continent. No, now, now really? it's o- Oceana. Is not my my son is like big into geography these days, and uh, they call that whole region Oceana. Oceana. Oh, so it's so it's uh, Australia, New Zealand. UK, yeah, and it's, and both answers are correct. If you if you say Australia, you will get the you will get you will get the you'll points. You will get the, the points. Trivia. And if you say Oceana, you will also, you'll also get the points. Get the points. Okay. Well, but where are we on the continent aspect of it? <laughs> that's what it's a part about. of that. That's where we are. That's where we're at. But that, the Oceania is, the, is continent. the continent. Is now the continent. But all, if continent. you say Australia, I see what you're saying. I didn't see what you were saying yes. before. Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's still on the left side of the road in Ireland in his yeah, mind yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. He hasn't left. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I, I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, as you know, we give you the raw, unfiltered feed here on the podcast. We will always tell you how we really feel and go to war over what we believe in. And right now, we're at war with shampoo. Hair Story's new wash cleansing cream is like shampoo, but it's actually good for your hair. It's a first-of-its-kind custom formula that cleans, conditions, detangles, and restores hair without the harsh foams and damaging detergents found in traditional shampoos. So break the wheel. New wash gives you your best hair day every day. It gives you more time in between washes, never overcleans, and prevents color from fading. And you know what's cool is uh, Hair Story has now come up with two new formulas. Mm, the new, new. New wash deep for deeper cleansing and new wash rich for even more moisture. Furthermore, shampoo is just really bad for the environment. What? But new wash is 100% biodegradable, comes in 100% recyclable pouch packaging and is part of 1% for the planet, donating 1% of eight ounce new wash sales to water-related issues. Plus, they offer a subscription so you can set it, forget about it, and keep the good hair days coming. Mm -hmm. You don't want your hair looking small, man. Try New Wash by going to hairstory.com, promo code SUNNY, and have your best hair day every day. Just like Glenn. Mm -hmm. New Wash is the best way to wash your hair. Visit hairstory.com, promo code SUNNY, to learn more. Enjoy 20% exclusive savings when you use the code SUNNY at hairstory.com at checkout. I really have to say I love this episode because I think my favorite Sunny episodes are where the stakes are self-generated from within the gang. Um, like Dee comes in with this acting job that she has, but the whole stakes of that scene where Mac and Charlie are pitching you the movie is kind of self-created. Like 
Frank just says that Dennis is a producer. And then you guys are pitching to him with the like <laughs> earnest need, like he can do something if yeah. you if you sell him this movie. And it all kind of is like self-generated within and never kind of breaks outside of the gang, which I think is always like really funny because you totally believe you all believe the stake. Like you and, and uh, like Mac and Charlie are just so like, okay, we, we are, this is our one shot. And you're like, you live with this guy. I mean, you talk to him every <laughs> yeah, right, single right, yeah. day. You talk to him like he is a total pro- access like a to producer this guy. Yeah. and an agent is great. Uh, I would just like to say to the audience out there, that's, that's accurate in Hollywood. There are so many people that walk around this oh, city. Sure. They just show up and they tell people they're producers. And the next thing you know, people are pitching to them. And I don't know what they do. I don't know what these people do. <laughs> Think of all the people that you know who call themselves producers and who don't uh, produce anything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a good grift. For the sake of not going crazy, I'm I'm going to strongly agree with you. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's some. <laughs> yeah, there's some. Uh, Suspect producers out there for sure. <laughs> it is true though that you can you could you could just step into a room and be like, I'm a producer. You know, and 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 you know where I see it a lot too is when people have production companies. Yeah. It's uh, like yeah. I've got a production company. Mm-hmm. And then you go on like, you know, IMDB Pro and you're like, you know, because some guy handed you a card and you're like, oh, what is this? What have they done? Nothing. I, I was just in Philadelphia uh, for an event and I was talking to many people outside of our industry, which is always fun because we live in this bubble where everybody we know works in some capacity or lives with or is, we're, we're, we're very close to everybody uh, or so many people that work in this in this industry. And to talk to people outside of it, they'll ask questions um, like, what is a producer? Like, what does a producer actually Ooh, that's do? That's a tough question and to answer. And it's a tough question to answer because there's so many there's so many different jobs that fall under that umbrella, and one of which is nothing. Yeah. The answer is nothing. Yeah. I don't do anything. I have a name. I have that a name that they put something. up there, and then they pay me for that, but I don't produce mm-hmm. anything. Yeah, they at well, one point like, did, and now they just put their name on it, and that's it. Like, when someone's good at it, it's an incredible asset. You are something. actually making something. Yeah, you're really yes. making something. You're making sure it, it, it happens. It happens on schedule. You're making sure it gets seen. You're guiding it creatively. Um, and then there are the people who sort of are able to like claw onto something and then put their name on a thing. I do think the do Producers nothing. Guild does try to um, does try to protect for that a little bit. Like on films, you can't get the title of producer. You can get like, you know, associate producer or co-producer or executive producer on a film without having to to go through as many steps as I think you have to go through from, this is from what I understand from talking to Jill about this, cause this is what she does. But like you have to go through a lot more steps to, to get that big P producer title on a film. No, and it's also I different mean- in film and television, right? Like the big, the best title, the best producer title you can get on a film is producer. The best producer title you can get on a TV show is executive producer. I don't know why. Yeah, it's all. Cause executive yeah. producer doesn't mean as much on a film as it does on a TV show, but the average person probably just has does not know that at all. I don't know. It's a tough thing to gauge what it is within a project and, and what it does to make it better or make it exist. Um, and we all know, because just from having worked with both the producers that are essential to the success of a project and then the ones that are able to kind of just be in the way, or the ones that actively make it more difficult to succeed. <laughs> it is amazing how often you'll see, you know, I'll see, I'll see a, a movie you know, that Ryan did and I'll see somebody's name on there who I recognize and then I'll text them and say, oh, I know that person or I've worked with that person. Um, h- how did you find that experience? And he was like, never met that person before, never saw yeah. that person, had nothing to do with the making mm-hmm. of that movie. But even I'm, even I'm watching it and, and it tricks me into believing that they had something to do with the movie, but they didn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it, 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 it's, it's, it's kind of insulting to the people who really are the kind of producers who are there on set every single yeah. day, standing behind the, you know, behind the monitors and are really involved and are there on a daily, hourly basis, like solving problems as they come up, which are, of which there are 
a zillion Mm -hmm. on a movie set. Like, it's constant problem solving and trying to protect the director. And and being uh, in between the studio and the director and and navigating those. It's an extraordinarily difficult job for the people who do it, who are there on set, like doing, like really doing the job of producer. I've done a lot of projects with John Ricard. uh, And John Ricard now works with Peter Safran and and they, uh, I think Peter now runs DC with... um, uh, James, James Gunn. Gunn with James Gunn, yeah. But John is a real producer. You know, mm. John like may, is making things happen every day and making mm. sure that that the movie happens and and then making sure that the movie gets seen and and gets out to an audience. And yeah. there are a million things coming at you left and right that are either going to compromise or ruin. Um, but then I've worked with people, you know, or had people seen people get their name on a project at the 11th hour who really had nothing to do with it except maybe were somehow involved in the sale or the distribution of something. Yeah. That you're like, oh, wow, that's a, should be a different title for that. Do you guys remember if this episode came out of like M. Night Shyamalan talking about that and wanting to talk about like movies with twists and stuff or more out of like uh, wanting to skewer sort of Hollywood? Because the the show has occasionally ventured into some like, Hollywood territory, you know, with the Thunder Guns and like the mm-hmm. Lethal Weapon movies, and like the characters are dancing around wanting to be like in the industry. Do you remember like how that kind of? No, I think it was that. I think it was that. It, M. It's Night more Shaw. skewering our characters, like what they would think a good movie was, and would that be, that yeah. was fertile ground for a really funny comedy. Just their what their pitch was about a guy who smells crime. Like, okay, we know that's going to be funny, right? With M Night, I think it was just that he was a famous successful guy from Philly. Yeah. Who uh, makes all yeah. of his movies in Philly. <clears throat> who okay. makes all of his movies in Philly. So we're like, well. The our characters kid- could potentially have access to one Yeah, of yeah. That, yes. And they would be aware of him. Do you remember where Dolph Lundgren, specifically, like why you centered on Dolph Lundgren <laughs> as a, as a. I think, I think then just, that carried through to Sonny, like yeah. that being your sort of favorite action star. I think probably just because Rocky IV was such an iconic movie uh, at the time. And then certainly for these characters, and we'd already established it as that. Yeah, I mean, we we started talking about that uh, in season two. Here's yeah. Sunny fan fiction that might be fun to kind of think about. By the time we were pitching this movie, had we already shot Lethal Weapon Seven? <laughs> Our characters? Oh, oh, oh! No. You know, yeah, in the oh, canon, oh, the the characters in the timeline, in the time. Yes, probably. Yeah, but, well, because because that doesn't that. Uh, oh, well, no, not seven. Uh, I think the first one we did was what Lethal Weapon six? five, six. six. <laughs> I can't even remember. I don't remember. But the, whatever the first one is you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I imagine it was because I think we did the first Lethal Weapon episode in season six, didn't we? You know what would be fun oh, fun Jesus to do? Again. Maybe we did. for a fan yeah. to do? This is this actually seems like something Meg would love to do, is to build a sunny chronology <laughs> yeah. from, oh from, from birth <laughs> until like where we stand <laughs> now because yeah. we play so many things out of timeline mm-hmm. and we talk back to the good old days of when this might have happened mm-hmm. or when this mm-hmm. happened. High school, like what you guys did Schmitty, high school. Like we met Schmidt throwing rocks at trains, uh-huh. yeah. you know, where we met. Mm-hmm. I would think, yeah. yeah. Yes, what years? That either they had already shot Lethal Weapon Seven. I think they or probably Lethal Weapon Six. They shot it six, yeah, a six. six, or they shot it immediately after this whole episode of D being in a it movie. Was a second swing, and they at were it. like, "Yeah, you know what? We should make a movie. A yeah. sequel would be easier. We should start with a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have know. to come up with it like whole Wholesale. cloth. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that uh, in this episode, my two favorite scenes are the one of. Uh, Mac and Charlie brainstorming the idea for the movie, which yeah, is yeah, so yeah. funny. And it really captures <laughs> that feeling in a writer's room where you feel like you get on a roll and then you're all like firing and people are throwing out, yes, and you're getting so excited about it. And then that one person goes a little too far yeah. and you're like, well. You're like, ah. I, It was kind of funny for me watching that to be like, yeah, this kind of does mirror our relationship where how many times have we been in a room kind of pitching ideas and getting each other excited about an idea like Mm -hmm. (laughs) many, many times for many, many, many years. We both have the realization at the same time, we've got something here and we got to get it on paper. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I want the movie to be big, right? You know, and like a box office smash and we want to put like a lot of meat in the seats, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm thinking, dude? You know what I'm thinking? Something that's happening in Hollywood that's like pretty cool. They take an underrated actor, right? Whose career is in a slump and then they make him a star again. Oh, that is awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, so 
Who is the most underrated actor of all time? It's Dolph Lundgren. Correct. Why? Well, because of his uh, spiky hair and yep. his ice cold demeanor and his big muscles. Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. So we have our actor. Okay. okay that's great. Now we need a really great role for him. Oh, uh, you know what I was thinking? Scientists are cool. What if he's a scientist? Okay, okay, a muscular scientist. I'm into that. Right. As long as we don't cover up that body with no, a lab coat, bro. dude. He's wearing like a hot mesh tank top. I like that. Now, does he like fight crime or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fights crime uh, with his brain and his brawn. Should we be writing this down? Let's get this down. All right, this is good. All right. But it also, I think, mirrors like you seem to, you know, Charlie seems to be like pure, like, creative kind of uh, output with no structure, <laughs> no filter <laughs> structure yeah. at all. And then Mac is sort of like, well, you know, let's put that <laughs> into can't something. It be sheer that, madness. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, can't run can. around like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then the other great one is the pitch, the pitch scene where, where yeah. they are then pitching to Dennis their that movie. That is it. That, yeah. And that that the, scene you know, is fucking the, great. And the scene in the, you're and, talking about the scene in the trailer? In the trailer. <laughs> and then and Danny the, in that scene is amazing too. All right, you guys got 30 seconds. Blow my mind. Okay, 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 okay. guys, guys. It's the prequel to the sixth sense. The fifth sense, the sense of smell. Imagine a super ripped, super smart scientist in a mesh tank top named Dr. Dolph Lundgren. No, that's that's not his name. He's played by Dolph Lundgren, but that's not the character's name. No, it name. could be the character's name. No, that's... A doctor played by Dolph Lundgren named Dolph Lundgren? Yeah! That's confusing. No, that's more confusing than making up an entirely new name for a person? That's gonna confuse people. I'm taking over. I'm taking over. You are losing me. Okay, okay. Imagine a super smart, ripped scientist played by Dolph Lundgren, who, after a terrible accident in his lab, blows off his nose. After reconstructive surgery, he soon realizes that he smells something that stinks. But I think what makes it for me, it's so stupid, but the crumpled papers that you're all holding, the like, mm -hmm. the loose leaf paper that <laughs> yeah, you're, just, you're all, just like, it's all mm -hmm. a mess and you're holding onto it. Well, we got to get, the, there's genius here. <laughs> yeah. And we just got to get somebody to, to put it in order. To yeah. type it, it up. Right. Yeah, yeah, type it up, get it in order. Yeah, it's fine. Those two scenes for me... Super funny. Danny with the sausages in the beginning. Great. So but yeah, the, the, whole the episode itself, like, wasn't my favorite, like, from a structure, like, the story standpoint. Um, but, I don't know. But still, it's funny. It's just funny. It's just funny. I, and yeah, that's that speech that we wrote for, for Dennis. It's just still, I remember, it just was one of those things where, as an actor, where you're just like, oh, man. This is like, <laughs> this is exactly what I want to do. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, you get those, you have those moments, moments where you where you have a thing, and you you're like, you have this moment where you step outside of yourself, or or you you're able to <laughs> reconnect with the child inside you who wanted to become a professional actor, and go, oh my god, I get to I get to deliver this speech. Like, this is so funny. Now, in terms of the story, uh, clearly. It's brilliant. It's amazing. Great and, idea. And, and I like it a lot. Brilliant idea. Smelling but there crime. is one critical element that's missing. It needs a sexual punch up. We need to get a female lead character in there that Dolph can bang throughout the whole movie. Yeah, I kind of hate women, though. Oh. I feel like they just slow action movies down, too. Right. No, Maxie, you're dead wrong on that. Mm. You're dead wrong. See, one of the problems with Shyamalan's movies is that they lack a certain eroticism. What if we were to bring. Uh, an incredibly hot but skeptical female lab partner into the mix. And then that way, whenever Dolph's not out busting heads because he smelled crime, he's back at the lab performing outrageous sexual experiments on her supple young body. Now here's the twist, and there is a twist. We show it. We show all of it. Because what's the one major thing missing from all action movies these days, guys? Full penetration. Guys, we're going to show full penetration, and we're going to show a lot of it. I mean, we're talking, you know, graphic scenes of Dolph Lundgren really going to town on this hot young lab tech. From behind, 69, anal, vaginal, cowgirl, reverse cowgirl, all the hits, all the big ones, all the good ones. And then he smells crime again. He's out busting heads. Then he's back to the lab for some more full penetration. He smells crime. 
Back to the lab, full penetration, crime, penetration, crime, full penetration, crime, penetration. And this goes on and on and back and forth for 90 or so minutes until the movie just sort of ends. And then it became a part of our everyday vernacular. Yeah, the, the end of the it. The end of it. Yeah. That it just sort of goes just, on and that's on. That's what it was from, was that moment, right? Sort of just ends. Sort of ends. <laughs> Which is, I, I, I believe like, how people would think of a movie, yes. you know, or a TV show or any story. It's Somebody just, who doesn't know. You know, know, there's a beginning, there's a middle, a bunch of things happen. I but mean, we actually, just, we set that up in the very beginning. Yeah. We're just telling a series of events that happen and then it ends. And yeah. that's the story. Yeah. 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 But it's exactly. the way you tell it. Yeah. And then you say, the way you told it was by far the worst part. Far of the worst part. <laughs> <laughs> but also it's within that too. big speech, I also love it. It's just such a silly little thing. But you say, um, all the hits, all the best ones, all, all, the, big all, the, ones. The, all the good all ones. All the big ones. Yeah. All the big ones. <laughs> that's, one, that's something I feel like you kept saying. Yeah, all the big moves. Yeah. All the all the main the sex yeah. moves. <laughs> <laughs> also, Charlie thinking the twist of uh, the Sixth Sense is that that guy in the hairpiece was Bruce Willis. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that was a joke. I remember being in there from the original outline, like all the yes. way, like yes. Somebody that Charlie down the room. Charlie watched the Sixth Sense, not knowing that that was Bruce Willis <laughs> because he had hair. Because he yeah. had hair. Because yeah. he had hair, so he didn't know that was Bruce Willis. And then John the, McClane doesn't have that much hair. No, yeah, exactly. And then he sees the movie and he realizes at the end he's like. Oh my God, that's Bruce Willis, and he thinks that's. The, but it, it was just because that's the. That, that was when he realized that it was yeah. Bruce Willis, and He's so Bruce that was Willis the twist in instead. his mind. Instead, <laughs> instead, instead of that guy. You know who else is amazing in that is Donnie Wahlberg. Yes. Yes. Can we give it up for yes. Donnie Wahlberg, who is incredible in that film? Yeah. <laughs> give it up. All right. He dude. had the right stuff. Donnie <laughs> Wahlberg. Yeah, he's great in that. He's great in that movie. That movie. Very good, Glenn. Okay. <laughs> delight. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I should rewatch that movie. What over uh, my head? Well, yeah, because I hung up. It's fine. I, I said, I said, Donnie yeah. had the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, the um, right stuff. Just, I get yeah, it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, I know. You, you, you just. You oh, so you it. got it. You just didn't care. You just didn't care for it. <laughs> um, it's fine. We don't. Yeah, it was fine. It. it was fine. Yeah, no, it was a joke, and it was fine. It was fine. It wasn't worth slowing down. Wasn't worth slowing down. Uh, you guys, the Always Sunny podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't been, uh, I'm tired. I haven't been uh, sleeping well lately. Have you not? Everything okay? I mean, yeah, I, I, I thought so at least. I just haven't been able to fall asleep and uh, none of my tried and true uh, sleep aids are working. Uh, you know what, Charlie? Honestly, the, I, I, I'm having a little bit of a sleep problem myself lately. I'm just, you know, every time I lay down, I'm just, my mind is spinning. I, I can't shut it off, you know I mean? So I tell you, there's some nights I can't, I honestly can't sleep at all. Mm -hmm. Have you tried the Tasty Trio? The Tasty Trio? <laughs> uh, I have Cat not. Cat food, glue beer. Okay, but I think I'd prefer to get to the root of the problem. Okay. Oh, you know. Well. It sounds like a great opportunity for you both to try BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy service designed to be flexible, affordable, and convenient to your schedule day or night. Really? I can use BetterHelp when I'm up in the middle of the night? Sure. You can message your therapist on BetterHelp whenever you want to, and they'll get back to you as soon as they can. I personally have used BetterHelp before, and it helped me a lot for um, what I was going through then. Did you ever message them at 3 a.m.? I'm going to plead the fifth on that. Well, if you are thinking about it, give it a try. Just go online and fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. Plus, you can switch therapists at any time at no additional cost. So go ahead and let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash sunny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sunny. Um, I think my favorite <clears throat> line in this episode is very small, but in the library scene where you guys are looking for somebody who to type up your script for you, and you point out that older lady, and then Charlie says, I don't care for her demographic. Yes. I find them judgmental. I right. find them judgmental. I find them judgmental. Was that in the script, or did you just have an extra that day? You can't No remember. idea. I mean, sounds like it was scripted. That's not like, scripted. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it must have been because we feature the lady, so. Yeah, okay. I She's think a featured extra. It is still she was a yeah. featured extra. Yeah. Exactly. Featured extra. Mac hating women was not in the script. That was <laughs> that. I remember that. I remember that specifically. Well, well and you because your reaction to it is like right. you're expecting him to say something that you're 100 percent on board with. He starts to say something. You've got the pen in your hand and you're pointing to him. You're like, oh. and then he says that, and you're like, oh, <laughs> like yeah. that's I, not I think what I thought there he was might be say. even outtakes of, of that. 
in, in yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think the line was something like women always ruin action slow movies. Down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they slow down movies, which I follow up with. But yeah, I led with I kind of hate women though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think and then just yeah, leave yeah, it I think that. it's just starting to <laughs> started to go that way with your character yeah. right around there. Uh, it was like a, yeah. we planted a flag right there. Uh, yeah, sort of, yeah. At the time it didn't it didn't have as much significance as it took it was on later. Just but, pure misogyny. Yes, just pure misogyny. <laughs> yeah, at that, point, that was not, like that was just misogyny. And then from there. There, you know. But I, it's all just your the, character hadn't looked into why he hates women. <laughs> yes, right. exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, and and but just, so it's like a complete lack of awareness as to how offensive that could be to some people, also, yeah. and how you deliver it. It's just kind of like I kind of hate women, though. Yeah, but you, you can, know, because you guys get that. You got, you get right. it. You, <laughs> get it. you, you guys it. hate women too. Yeah. So you know, can we not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, I mean, the the lack of. <laughs> A self reflection for all the characters is yeah. speaking of hating greatest. women, Kate, Caitlin. Uh, that, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit. Mor- oh. That, uh, <laughs> hey, there you yeah, yeah, heard it here, folks. We, the way that we would shoot that now would be completely different. At the time, we, we didn't even think about the fact that there was four or five different scenes in four different locations with her wearing all of that makeup, that blood. So she put it on in the morning oh, and then oh, had to yeah, shoot all, all of and had to wear it all day. Like you can't even We've go sit in a chair without sticking we to everything. We would never do that now. We would no. shoot all of her stuff in a short amount yes. of time as we yeah. possibly it's could. It's just so sticky and like, yeah, you sit down to have and lunch you made, and you're just like, solidify. And then you made yeah. her go face down on yes. like a concrete Well, that was floor. a producer knowing it would be cheaper to get all the shots in that location that day. And <laughs> us still being young enough to let the producer get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm going to produce, I don't care if you're sticky all day, we're going to get this this yeah, thing done. In the most efficient, in the cost, most of, cost, cost effective, effective way possible. Yeah. Do you guys know that uh, Lex Medlin played the AD that he was, was great. dealing with? Did, was he like a friend of yours? Or no, just I don't know. think so. I think that was just an audition situation, yeah. right? I mean, he I is so him. good in that episode. He's fantastic. Very but funny. everybody else in the crew, it was fun. Uh, did you notice that the rest of the crew that was standing around was our actual oh, crew? Was it? I didn't and I was and I was trying to think if I could remember. A lot of their names because it was people from years ago. So there's yeah. a whole lineup at some point behind them. Oh, really? Including the the I'll camera guy. The, our our. Do you remember? I our, saw the Ko lighting thing KO. in the back of the. Oh my god! Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, Ko is our, our our gaffer, and uh, yeah. his dad uh, w- was a. He was the dad. Keith, Ko was, was the dad. The Keith Orifice Keith, and yeah. his son his Jared Orifice. Orifice. Yeah. Yeah. The Orifice family. The Orifice family. Okay. Um, and, and his dad passed away during the run of the show. So there's yeah. like one of Meg, the first did you want to comment people. on that? No, I just oh, never okay. heard right. a last about- name of Orifice before. <laughs> you have it. That's a new new one for me. It's a new Orifice You for wonder Meg. like new where that, because like didn't mo- a lot of last names that came from like what you did for a living? You know what I mean? <laughs> Like where did Orifice come from? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. what did that guy? What did mm-hmm. he? What did his what ancestors did do? do for a living? <laughs> that they had that. It was, it was probably some beautiful name from like another country right. that he went through. Right. Oriviche. 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 Just Italian for opening. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a grand opening. <laughs> like a, or like a sea, a sea creature. Uh, the beautiful Oriviche swim up on the beach. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Here's one little like creative cheat that we've done several times um, where when you start to see the movie within the movie, it's like a fully produced movie. Yeah. You're hearing like the music and the score and the like machine gun fire. about seeing it without that. What do you mean? Seeing it more like it was from the monitor and you're not hearing the the movie score. Uh-huh. But I think because you don't that. have like character lines, you don't have like dialogue. Comedically, it feels like she's ruining more. Yes. When it's like yes, fully yes, 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 yes. I think that's what it is. It's yeah. like when when she's when she's ruining it, it's funnier if she's ruining it as you're watching I think it too because the shot itself we hadn't scripted anything for it, right? So it's just like, you know, we let Randall kind of probably come up with what it was. And yeah. and it was just, you know, guys walking with some machine guns. And it probably in the editing room was like a little boring to be like, oh, well, nothing much is happening. So like you said, she's not ruining much versus like if it had been like an intense dialogue scene or something and the camera went by, the people like talking and then she's saying, 
brains <laughs> in the shot, you know. But Dennis is funny. But it was brains. also, but that was also what was supposed to be funny about it too. Is it's just like this is just a second unit. Oh yeah, that's right, right, like, right. This, this isn't, isn't even that important. It's like, supposed to just, be an easy <laughs> shot to get. Yeah, it's just a quick shot where we're showing all these poor people their dead, their dead bodies. Like that's that's all it really is. Mm-hmm. And then she's just ruining everything. Have yeah. you guys ever ruined a scene by having your phone ring in the middle of it? I mean, well, Glenn's phone it. rang earlier. Did, I know, yeah, during the podcast. Today. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it we was can, so loud. I never turned I mean, my ringer I, feel, I mean, I've seen it happen a million times, but. You can see there, you could probably do a super cut of the amount of times that you'll see one of us like in the middle of a scene in Sunny and we just like reach down to our pocket and, and then yeah, just you do that. You just to, click it. Discreetly like, to click it. Yeah, because it's vibrating. It's vibrating. And so like you're in the middle of a scene and you just like, you know, keep going with the scene. That's a real pro move right there. That's a real, you could probably, you could probably scour movies and TV shows and find that. See that happening. Yeah. That'd be a fun super cut actually. If somebody could really, that would take a lot of work. That's, that's something for the AI. To find that's something for the AI, <laughs> right? That's for, the yeah. kind of thing that AI is going to be really good for, mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Is like, you know, scouring the internet for for moments like that. You know, something that a human being just could never possibly have the patience to do. I don't think. Mm. God, I hope not. <laughs> if you got that kind of time mm. on your hands, wow. I'm uh, I'm looking at the timetable, and we 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 have that's not fair. too long left. So I feel like we should, and this should just sort of end. Uh. You want to argue? Did you want to talk about overhydration? Yes. Did you want to argue about something? Okay. Do you are you over or are you underhydrated? About, let's talk about overhydration because I got into, I got, I, I was, I was excited to come to the podcast because I said to Caitlin, Glenn and I got into a fight last time and I still don't believe that I've been heard. <laughs> <laughs> the following content has been edited for time. You're welcome. People who are concerned with their hydration are not drinking when they're thirsty only. They are forcing fluids because they're, they believe that they're supposed to. Now, I imagine, I can only imagine that part of you was excited to bring this up because you thought I was going to have some sort of retort uh, no, to the effect no, of— No, no, no. Where my mind went where my mind went to was where I feel like the missing piece of our of our argument— maybe, maybe this was resolved. I, I, I don't really know. First of all, I— Never remember thinking, reading, hearing, and certainly not saying that coffee was poison. But if you say I said it, I guess maybe I did. Well, of course, there's a limit to how much water you can drink, right? If you drink, if if you start drinking water right now and you don't stop, you will, of, you will of, drown. Of, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm just trying to understand how you can't see something. But why do I care about that? I don't know. This back and forth has gone on for a while. I don't know what are what are we trying to. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm all for right. it. Keep going back and forth. But how much water do you have to drink to kill yourselves? I wonder how many times we can have this conversation on the podcast and have it remain interesting. Boy, I did do- I miss you guys. <laughs> this has been great. I do have to wrap it up because we have time constraints today. And so, uh, unfortunately, this is where it has to end. Oh, with no satisfaction. No, no, satisfaction. no satisfaction. No satisfaction. <laughs> Just a cliff- maybe a cliffhanger. I don't know. Maybe that's good. We'll be back to talk more about. Let's not. What we disagree about. <laughs> Let's, Let's not. not. 